Okay, so it's week three. I'm trying to get the camera going here. Say hello. Oh, there we go. So um, I guess it's time to take a picture. That's why that face uh, recognition thing is on. Maybe I can change those settings. Give me one quick second. Personal home photos, right? Framing grid. Just off videos. Give me one second here, guys. Yeah, I was trying to turn that little square off, but uh, anyway, so what we're going to do today in uh, PV is cover two separate aspects of site surveying. So here we are in week three, and the solar pathfinder is the first instrument that we're going to examine. It's just, it's a piece of hardware, and then when we're done with that, we're going to look at the piece of software called PV Watts. So we actually do have a solar pathfinder here in class. And I'm just going to show you a picture of it. Fairly simple device. Um, let's just look at this guy first. So it has a little tripod. Uh, the point of having the tripod is so that it um, it sits level, right? So if the device weren't level and you were pointing it right at the sun, it would not give you an accurate representation of, of where you are right now. So there's a level, um, so a tripod in, in both directions. The um, device itself uh, has a compass so that you can figure out where true south is versus magnetic south. So you, you, we change this based on the declination. And then the most interesting part, let's see if we can zoom in on this guy a little bit. Okay. So on the chart, you'll see December, January, November, February, October, March, September, April, August, May, July, June. Now, why are the months out of order like that? Well, if you notice, the months, this is obviously for the Northern Hemisphere, the months with the longest days are here, and the months with the shortest days are here. And if we zoom back out, we can also see the um, sort of the hours in the day. So 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8, 9, 10, noon, etc., to 7 p.m. So what you can see is back in June, which has the longest days, okay, the sun came up at 4.30 and the sun set at 7.30. That's your, your total uh, day for 37 to 43 latitude. We have several of these similar charts for, I think it's 45 to 48 latitude. And you'll notice on those that the, this, this line wraps around a little bit longer. If we were up at the North Pole, you'd actually see something that wrapped almost all the way around. Nevertheless, what we're looking at right here, and let's just zoom back in again, um, are the number of hours per day that you're, that you're gonna see sunlight. So if you can, um, if you can fill in this little gap, you'll actually get an extra hour of sunlight. But if you are shaded by a mountain, so this is actually the, the trace of what you would see on the solar pathfinder. So the pathfinder itself sits here like a little uh, disc. There's a sphere on top. And the, the purpose of the sphere is to basically ref reflect all of the sunlight coming down. So when you go to make your marks, what you'll see is a shadow. You don't actually see it on this guy. Let me see if we can find another one. Uh, oh, this is a good one right here. Let me go, let me go back to that guy. View image. Yeah, so in, in this case, see the, you can actually see the tree, you can see the house, you can see the bushes, and so these are basically hours of sunlight that you are not going to get during each of those months. 
Okay, so then what, what comes out is a little printout. So you can either count it up by hand, or in this case, you can see a little tally. So for each month, January, February, March, etc. So for each one of these little lines, you can see the percentage that's unshaded. And, you know, somewhat as expected in these summer months when the sun is higher, you have less shading. Okay, and then from there, it's a, it's a pretty big jump over into uh, PV watts. And we'll get to PV watts here in a second. Um, and it also takes us to kilowatt hours. This should be actually per square meter per day. So you can then say I've got um, you know an average of 4.62 sun hours per day. And if we you know take that 4.62, multiply by um, square meters, we're going to get kilowatt hours per day. That's so that so this number is is, is very valuable. Okay, so those, those are the key numbers to put in. And if you're using some sophisticated software, so up here if you put in six cents a kilowatt hour, it'll actually show you the savings. Because somewhere in here you've already entered the amount of energy per month that you're using. So there's uh, before and here's after and there's your uh, dollar savings per month so you can go straight from you know nature through technology and right on into the economy kind of a neat neat flow through there okay so that's basically how the solar path founder works we've used it frequently we used it for the Lomason project we used it for the west campus project um, i'm even going to dig out i'll dig out one other um, analysis that I did. So I'm going to pause for a second and dig that guy out. Okay, so I, I found it. So what I'm going to show you here now is actually a, a solar thermal analysis that I did for a business here in town. Uh, this, the same exact uh, analysis will apply for PV. It's just I was, I was converting the, the solar pathfinder hours into B, excuse me, BTUs rather than kilowatt hours, but the math is essentially the same. So let me just take you through this engineering report. So again, this is something that I did for a local business a couple years ago. Um, and what they were trying to do is actually build a trom wall for one of the sites. And there's that 4.5 kilowatt hours per day, very similar. Um, 194 kilowatt hours per year and that's the window size. And I went to NREL's maps. Let me show you that. And what I did here is January, February, March, etc. So there, there are actually 12 separate NREL maps and I just dug into each one. There's Missoula, went to the chart and this is all in kilowatt hours per square meter per day. So I actually use those 12 maps. Um, and I said if we're spending this many cents per kilowatt hour and you were using all electric, you'd save 7,000 bucks a year if you, if you sucked all this energy in as heat. Not too shabby. Um, and then I said at $10 per thousand square foot of gas, it would be two thousand dollars of savings. So right here up front in the analysis I said this is going to be your savings per year if you build this structure. And so I said if you if over 30 years, some, you know, just using you know very simple payback method, 70k, um, and then I did also did a carbon footprint analysis. So here's a little bit of carbon accounting. Okay, and then I went into a little bit of analysis. Let's just take a look. Um, I did heating degree days. I did the solar pathfinder, which we're talking about right now. A couple different designs. This is an architect 
this is the engineering, there's the economics, here's uh, if you're going to capture all the heat. Typically, I mean, in solar PV, you want all the photons all the time. Solar thermal, just give me the heat in the winter, typically, and you're like, oh, well, let's capture some of them and do, you know, hot water or whatever. So, put in a little table of figures. But, uh, let's dig into it. And I just, just, I just explained what a heating degree day was, saying that if, I, if I'm uh, five degree difference over one day, that's five heating degree days. If I've got a 25 degree difference, et cetera, et cetera, in five days, I can actually have 125 heating de degree days. Notice there are no energy units on that. Then you have to multiply by how much heat per day or what, to, you know, to get total energy. But let's just take a look at the uh, solar pathfinder. So in this case, there was a, um, a building over here, a building over here. I added all these up. You can see I was using the, the correct pathfinder between 43 and 49, so we're at 45 or 6 here in Missoula. Uh, zero degrees elevation, uh, or zero feet, sorry, zero feet elevation. And I did it just, just about two years ago. Okay, so I put this all into a spreadsheet. This was kind of my own custom gig. So let me show you the spreadsheet itself. I have to remind myself exactly what I came up with. Okay, so for, so there's June, and at June, we're gonna get, um, Five kilowatt hours per square, 5.5 .5 kilowatt hours per square meter per day. That's in B38. And then I multiplied it by one, and then I divided it by 100, because it's going to be that percentage of the entire amount. Uh, same thing here. So basically, I'm just, I'm just copying the numbers back to that um, shot of the solar pathfinder. So I'm just I'm just going in and just copying all the numbers. There's a seven, there's a six, five, four, three, et cetera, et cetera, into the spreadsheet. And then each one of those um, comes back as a percentage. That's why I'm dividing it by uh, 100. I gotta think about that for one second. Okay, so I just um, I just remembered what each particular number stands for. Each number stands for the percentage of insulation. So if we look down here in December and January, the sun is coming up later, and you'll but you'll also notice right around the noon hour, these numbers are bigger. Up here in June, July, we're looking at sevens. January, December, we're looking at nines. What is that number? Well, it's a percentage. As you can see what I did here, I just added up all of those numbers, and they always sum to 100%. So the number, so it just says that you're only getting 1% of your sunlight at, at this very last bit. You're getting 9% of it in this half hour period. 9% in that half hour period. So this is, you know, the, the bulk, like right, right there, there's 18% of your energy is coming in, those, in, those, in that one hour slot. So this is sort of the raw data from the Solar Pathfinder. I actually built this thing myself. I just copied it right in. And then from there, all I did was I went back to my figure, went back to this, wherever I, I, block, I blacked it out, I just did the same thing on my Excel spreadsheet and just put a zero in there. But otherwise, I just, I just copied and pasted. See that where this guy, um, 
that case, I said it equals the same. But let me let me just figure this out. This guy came from. Well, I guess if I were a little more clever, I would have just said that this equals that number, right? Because because this this is the raw data from the Pathfinder, and this is my own data from that specific site. Okay, so from there, I came up here calculated a percentage, the total percentage of energy that I'm going to get from each portion. And then here I, I came up into megajoules per year. This was kilowatt hours per year. This is the sum of A23 through A34. Let's see where that came from. A23 through A34. Okay, fine. Where did that come from? It was the product of kilowatt hours per square meter per day times the number of days in a year. So I did that for each each of these guys. Where did this number come from? Well, it was the sum of all of those um, kilowatt hours per day. So just to review what I did. Here's the, here's the raw chart from solar pathfinder here is the shading along with percentages and then each of these numbers is actually the kilowatt hours per square meter at that particular location that's the kilowatt hours per square meter so I went from percentage you know total percentage my specific percentage up to kilowatt hours on a half hour basis and the whole thing got summed there's your kilowatt hours per year there's your megajoules per year and then from there um, I just calculated my pounds of co2 per kilowatt hour pounds of co2 per uh, million BTUs electrical savings heat savings co2 offset co2 offset so this is a pretty pretty thorough analysis using the solar pathfinder this was the design of the of the solar thermal gadget it was just a bench that would get warm in the winter a few a few pipes for moving moving heat around through it here's just my cooling equations here's a design for a for a variable screen that would you know, allow heat in or not, depending on the position of this awning, you can sort of pull it up and down. And there's just a screenshot of my solar PV calculator, and then just some kind of fun little designs. And then a picture of what the trauma wall looks like. Okay. So, that is the solar pathfinder. Questions on that? Pretty straightforward. Okay. The key thing to remember though is that all those little numbers are the percentages on a on a monthly basis.